hello guys. For those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Mike from the user's blog channel. And what you guys probably don't know about me is that in my free time, I am a freelancer doing mostly logos and business card designs. So I decided to share a bit of my knowledge with you guys. And I started this tutorial series on Inkscape which I'll update every week, more like every Monday, with a new episode. Okay, so you guys are probably wondering why Inkscape. Well, first of all, Inkscape is a free software. You can get it on their website right here. I'm gonna put the link in the description. I'm not gonna go over the installing of the program since I'm pretty sure you're all capable of installing the program. No biggie. So, the big thing about Inkscape is that it's a vector graphic base. Despite uh, the pixel graphics, which if you zoom you can see the pixels right here. And that wouldn't look nice on many of your pictures. Um, Inkscape uses vector graphics which are based on mathematic formulas. You can like reshape them, resize them, my bad, and uh, it will be a perfect circle no matter what size you give it. So that's what we're going for. Pretty awesome. Alright, so I'm gonna start by explaining a bit about the command buttons here. So this is your normal select button, you can like select the shape, move it around, stuff like that. This one, you can control the shape. It has like these squares on it, you see, and you can resize the shape. Also, in some cases, you can give it a whole new shape. So that's pretty awesome. You can like control it. All right. Um, well, this command, I'll be honest, I never used it. I'm not really sure what it does. Uh, it's just weird. Uh, I'll, I'll look into it and if it's really something important I'll make a tutorial on it or something. But for now I handled my graphics without it and it doesn't seem really useful. The zoom function, so you have like zoom in and zoom out. You can also zoom in by holding the alt, the control button and using your scroll. That's much faster. A few resizes at the scale. This one centers your page and so on. You have all the info there. Uh, okay, so squares. You can like you can create squares. Well, rectangles, not really squares. But if you hold Ctrl and Shift while creating one, it's gonna be a perfect square if you get it right. Also, if you're gonna use the Edit Path arrow, you can go to the corner of a square and drag it like this and it rounds the corners. That's pretty neat. You can make these cool shapes. Then we have the um, circles. It's the same with as with the squares. If you hold Control Shift, you can create a perfect circle or any other shape. So stars and polygons. You have the sh your shape. You can select how many corners you want for it. 
so like this also you can use the edit paths to modify the shape of the star okay and polygons well apparently if you have a, a polygon or a star selected and you change the type it's gonna change automatically so be careful when you're doing it this is again something I didn't really use it creates spirals and it really wasn't something useful for me maybe you guys will find a use for it but it just wasn't my thing okay so draw this is like free hand drawing the thing about it unlike paint and stuff like that is that it's a vector shape and you can edit it but I don't recommend using the free drawing thing what I use in my designs are is this the bazier you can create nice curves with it um, it's way more useful so again you can edit the shapes and up here you have some commands for the lines for example if I press this the line will uh, round up so you can edit the shape you can make them uh, like this so yeah you can you guys can play a bit with those also if you use this command it breaks the nodes so basically now it's separate you can select them again and make them one which is pretty neat you can play around uh, with the shapes okay getting rid of this <laughs> delete button where is the all right i'm not <laughs> hitting the oh yeah you can't delete stuff unless you select them with your normal cursor all right so draw calligraphic again this is like the freehand draw it just has some weirder shapes to it I don't know, maybe you can make something artsy. Like uh, these weird shapes. But this is one of the tools I didn't really use again. So, uh, the next one is text. Well, text is simple, so. Oh, I have caps on. So you got the text. You can uh, change your fonts and sizes here. You can also go to text and text and fonts. So again, you have the, your fonts, the style, everything else here. And this commands uh change the spacing between the letters and such i usually use them since i like symmetry so i need to get stuff the same size and all all right yeah you can resize the text but you can hold control to resize it equally so it won't get distorted you can also hold shift control when resizing it and um, it will resize from the center instead of the left corner 
spray. So the spray is a bit weird, I'd say it. Hmm. Should make copies of. Okay. It was supposed to like make copies of the object you're holding your mouse over. And it kept spamming them around. Again, not something I use. Um, erase paths. This deletes paths, so it deletes objects. Just... You can either use that or just go on it and delete it normally. But it's more about... Well... Let's try this. Yeah, it actually deletes the whole object. Again, not something necessarily. You can just delete it with the delete key. Mm, I think this is like the fill bucket. Yeah, it just colors your object. Wait, something is... Oh. It made a duplicate with the fill. So it doesn't recolor the object. It uh, makes a clone with a color you want. And that's new to me. The gradient tool. This is really useful. Nice tool. So you can make linear gradients or radi radial gradients depending on what you want. So here's a radial gradient. You can select these points and uh, change the color, the starting color. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. So it works like this. When it's uh, radial, both these points have the same color, so you don't have to change for both of them. If you change for one, it will automatically change for the other. Also, you have opacity here, so before it was on zero. Again, this is zero opacity. It just seems like a Flash or something. Okay, so we have the pick colors. You can pick any colors of other objects you have on uh, in your file. Hmm, this is weird. It picked black. Oh, there we go. White. Let's do something different. Okay. So we select this and there we go. It just takes the color of another object. You don't have to search the color codes or anything, which is a great thing. And the last thing is a diagram connector and the way it works is like this you can like create diagrams and when you move stuff it automatically updates you don't have to edit lines or anything again it's a neat feature depending on what you do so make sure you use it if you need it um, the last thing I'm gonna talk about in the, this tutorial is uh, editing the document size. So I'm gonna do that again. File document properties. And this is your page size. You can change the size from here and it will update automatically. So let me show you. There. 
100 by 100. You can select the measure unit you want. So there's quite a few choices. Also, you have standard sizes. Uh, somewhere at the bottom, I saw some um, business cards. Yeah, here. sizes. So U.S. business card and Europe. Well, that's how you set your page. Uh, you can go into some extra stuff here. I didn't really change anything. But you can snoop around and see if you find anything you want to change. So guys, uh, I'll end today's tutorial here. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And see you guys next Monday. Bye bye.